Oh yeah, been doing quite a bit of rough turning recently. Uh, I've got a hell of a lot more to go. The Facebook group Woodchuckers. Um, I posted um, a bit of a crazy rough turning that I was doing. Quite a few, uh, a few people were saying, "Oh, that's scary. Uh, that all oh, that looks good." Or there was there was mixed reactions. So I thought, what I'll do is I'll do a video to show that it's not as scary as where it looks. I'll show you the piece and you'll probably think, no way, I'm gonna do that. But it's not as scary as what it looks. The reason why is is because the lathe that I've got anyway, check with your uh, lathe manufacturer, when you reduce the speed down to about 300, about 200, 300, somewhere around there, the torque of the motor reduces. It's a two horsepower motor, but there's nowhere near two horsepower. When, when you're at about 200-300 RPM you only get the maximum torques when you're up above say about 1000, 1200 to 1400 somewhere around there when I get a catch and I'll show you I'll do a catch on purpose when I'm roughing the lathe just stops uh, the, the piece just stops you pull the chisel out of the way and it starts rotating again so without further ado I'll show you the piece Right, this is a piece that I'm going to be rough turning. It's wet, not majorly wet. I think it's been cut a few months, uh, cut for a few months. So as it's turning, it's not splattering me, but you can feel it when uh, on the chippings that it's still wet. It's probably about 30% somewhere around there. Make sure you use a big face plate, the biggest face plate that you can use. This is technically end grain. Screw, uh, screwing into end grain so you need some very long screws these are three inch long and I've got a screw in every one of them except for one hole because I went to put a screw in that one and it's just rot it just disappeared so I just pulled it out the whole idea is what I like to do is to turn a tenon first and then actually mount it in a chuck before I do the majority but without further ado I'm going to get it spinning the maximum I can get this up to as it stands at the moment it's about 215, 216 something like that as you can see it's wobbling as expected that's too much about 216 something like that Right, before we start, do the obvious, turn it by hand first, see if it's knocking anywhere, see if it's catching anywhere. There's a slight rub, you'll hear it rubbing as, I'm, as I turn it on, that clicking, because it's just a little section of here that's just catching on the banjo. But that's going to be coming off fairly soon anyway, so I'm not worried about that. It's not a major catch. It's it wobbling quite a bit. So it's, put it at about 45, uh, 45 degrees. Not, you can do it like that, but I prefer about 45 degrees. Just move across. <laughs> you make sure it's to the side. What I'm doing now is I'm just getting a certain amount off. And I can stop it and move the tail stock in. Uh, tail stock. The tool rests in a little bit. Make sure it doesn't knock, which it does. clicking is just that piece there probably. No it isn't. It's that little tiny piece there. I'm not worried about that. Lock it off again. And I'll go 45 degrees the other way. Five 
really good away. Right? That's what I mean about the power, it slows down. Let me put a bit of pressure on. Start off at about 45 degrees, but you've got to be careful of the corner. As you come closer to the edge, and you can see it, you can uh, you can see when you're coming closer to a section that you haven't touched yet. You need to turn it more towards a shear scrape. Otherwise, what will happen is that corner all uh, that corner could dig in, but to cause a bit of a catch. Still, the same. It's it's not going to smash any pieces off. It will at a higher speed if you're doing a smaller uh, if you're doing a smaller piece. But it's better just to turn it a little bit, so then it's more like a shear, more like a shear scrape when you come in towards the shoulder of the tenon. Sharpen the chisel. In my era, what I was talking about is turning the tenon first and then mounting it in those 125mm uh, jaws. This face plate is wider than 125. <laughs> I was thinking, to be honest, about when I did it on the other bowl and I've got a much smaller face plate on. Uh, so, uh, so, I was, so I was able to do it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wobble off it. I'm going to do pri uh, primarily most of it on the face plate. Round it to so it's got no wobble on it up to for when I get it up to about say 500-600 rpm something like that. Stick it between centres, then make the tenon. Stick it to the chuck and then I can go. Uh, then I can start hollowing and well making it the shape that I want it to be. So what I'll do is I'll set off again at normal speed. And then part of the way through it, I'll start speeding it up because I'm sure you don't want to be watching me for about the next two hours. So with a sharp chisel, I sped it up by accident a little bit. Always check the speed first day.
Right, now I'm going to try the roughing gouge to try to speed things up a little bit. When you use a roughing gouge, you need to turn it. Imagine the tool rest being vertical there. You need to turn it about 45. Uh, well, this, the handle needs to be as far down as you can practically go. So you don't want anything hitting these corners. Same again, I'll show you a catch. I'll actually show you a catch with this, which would be severe if it's uh, if it was running fast. So I'll just show you what happens if it hits the corners at 200 RPM. So that's 215. See what I mean? It just stops. You just pull the chisel out of the way. So you hold the handle down as far as it can, uh, as far as it's practical. stop on regular occasions, you know what I mean, if, uh, if you want to, just to have a look, to see the progress that you're making. I'm making quite a bit of progress here, and it's only took about, say, 15 minutes so far, from the speed up, uh, what time we're on now, so it took about, say, 15 to 25 minutes, somewhere around there, to get to this stage. I've already got a floor covered in chippings. <laughs> It's so unfortunate that it's quite wide. I've just got that section there. I might see how that looks when I've gone a little bit further down. Caught the charger cable, <laughs> ripped the charger cable straight out. Fantastic. Well, you've heard about catches, haven't you? But I didn't think about the cable to be honest. Just severed it, severed it clean. So I think I'm gonna have to get a soldering iron out and some heat shrink. Repair that cable because it's the only charger I've got for that. It's a specific charger cable as well, it's not just a standard mini USB or micro USB. So let's get turning again.
Right, now I've got to this stage. Move that out of the way. I'd like might set this down a little bit more to bring that opening a bit higher. This PC here, aim of the game now, looking at it, I was looking at that being the rim, about that depth, but I don't know, I might like to have it a little bit higher. So what I'm going to do now is this level here, I'm going to take it straight up and see what, uh, see what I'm looking at then. It's got this here that could come out. I'm getting a slight undercut as well. There's a bit of rot down here. Slight undercuts all the way through there, so I don't really, I don't really want big noggings coming off. So I'm going to be taking it down gradually um, to level it off. So that's one thing you've got to look at as well. When you've got so, something so irregular here, you don't want to be coming across this way and a big chunk fly off. Even at that speed, you don't want it. You don't want it at any speed, really. So uh, I'm going to be taking this off gradually as I go along, standing obviously to the side, and then see where I'm at then when it's uh, when it's about that level, straight uh, straight up. Love that. Right, now I've got it up to about this stage. And now I'm going to look at it, looking at the figure and the shape of it. What I'm thinking of now is one of the vars doing that. Go, uh, going around, sweep, uh, sweeping around when it gets to about this point starting to curve towards the rim now what I'd like I might keep that there, I might take it down a little bit more see if I can see if I can keep this figure by shaving it down a little bit more to see if I can bring the bottom of this uh, bottom of this opening up a little bit. That is pretty level. I mean, I think I'm going to get a void there of some sort. But what I'd like is to have a solid line all the way around and get rid of this. That is rotted inside there. I can actually pick the wood out by my finger. I'd like to get rid of that, that section there. So it might mean making the rim about there. But I'll see, where I, see how I get anyway. I'm going, to smooth, I'm going to start from the bottom again, smooth it off and see if I can make some kind of shape out of it.
Sorry, I forgot it wasn't on record. Um, had a little break and then came back to it and took it down to this pot. Now these are loose. You've got that piece there, that knock in there and that knock in there. And if I go any further, it's got a risk of these being thrown off. So what I've done is, I've got the spindle lock on. I've just got a wood saw. Bit of elbow grease. patience it's not a perfect soft for wet wood and that's come off there Split the damage, that was all rot there, so it was all going to come off. And I think the rim quite like that curve there. The rim is going to have to be about where that line is. I might try to make it a little bit higher than that rim, higher than that ridge. And I can always take the rim down. Right, you'll notice a difference. I can't remember where I was up to now on the video. Not that well organised. But I've got the truck on. I had a bit of a difficulty because uh, I didn't notice before because it was a bit. I didn't inspect it properly. But there's uh, worm. wormwood that goes straight vertical up. So the centre of the centre of the tannin is very soft, couldn't get a screw hole in it. So uh, I had to use a bit of ply, screw the ply on through these holes here, quite close to the rim, marked out 125 on the ply board. Um, got the screws in best I could and then put a face plate in these holes. Small face plate here. So then I could turn the tenon down to 125. That's stable enough. It's got quite a bit of meat there that it's, uh, that it's gripping hold of. I've been having a look at this. I've got a knot there, 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 there. It's got a nice weathered look around here. So what I'm thinking about doing is taking off as little as the, of this as possible and maybe having a vase with a part rim just a half a rim and having this as a sweep in this is quite punky it's got you can pick it out this is bark so I'm gonna have quite a few voids quite a few windows in it it's a bit punky there Scriber. You can pick bits of wood out of this, out of the side of this knot. No, this is very soft. So I don't know how it's going to turn out when it's actually dry. But I do like this a lot. This line here. That when I hollow out, and then when I'm finishing turning. I'm going to take that out rather than go thinner, rather than taking it in. I'm going to leave that in, and then when it's dry, I'm, uh, if that doesn't fall out when I'm hollowing, I'm going to drill that out and get a Dremel and clean up all around the edges. Same round here. So I'm going to try to level it off. I'm going to take it to about there, as the rim. 